Hello, my name's Stuart and this is Scotland FX. Thanks very much for joining me on today's video. Been a little while since I've made a video, about a week. Uh, the reason for that is I've been heavily trying to recover my account and FTMO. Now, by that, what I mean is my trading strategy on the demo account worked brilliantly. Fantastic. Uh, and on the challenge account, just every trade seemed to go against me. Uh, as a result, I got myself, to, and I made a couple of mistakes as well, which I think I covered in the last video. Um, so, what I've been doing actually over the last week is, is ex looking at strategies. Uh, Indicator-based strategies where you've got a clean trigger to get in and a clean trigger to get out. Um, I feel that my problem is, and I don't know if this is a tr problem for a lot of traders, is that we have a tendency to be emotionally involved in the trades we take. Um, and it's hard not to be, we're human beings, we're not robots, we're not trading bots. But in saying that, you know, from what I've witnessed, the more dispassionate we can be about the trades we take, the more likely it is to be a winning trade. So rather than, you know, looking at price action and going, I feel that this is good to get time to get in, I feel this is a good time to get out, I feel this is a good time to perhaps change my stop loss to break even um it's those feelings that are the issue so uh because feelings are based on emotions emotions uh, and, and and it's kind of contrary to what you might think that you know your feelings will dictate your emotions but actually it's your emotions dictating your feelings so when you feel it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do that's based on your emotions of well not perhaps what you're seeing in your trade now the problem with that then is those emotions can affect your reasoning, can can affect your decisions um, and cause you to do the wrong thing. I think that's what I was doing. So I'll be looking for a, a trading strategy based on indicators. It's about, a little bit about price action, but more about indicators saying, get in, get out. End of story, no emotion. So I spent a week doing that with Great, with my best success and my worst failure, and, and I'll explain why in a moment. So, uh, this is about my FTMO journey. I am now literally uh, at the time uh, of recording this, uh, I, uh, I only have something like 1.5% left before I would be out of FTM I'm basically eight and a half percent down now in saying that a strategy I was using the other day I actually made 14 trades and 12 of them were winners that recovered at four percent on my account um, I grew my account by uh, the 50k challenge account by uh, by just over two thousand dollars so it was like four percent and then I got savaged uh, partly my fault, um, probably most certainly my fault, though I still feel slightly aggrieved at what happened and why, and I'll explain that in just a moment. So if that all sounds interesting, and I'm going to break down my strategy as well, uh, if you do me a solid, give this video uh, a thumbs up, that didn't work, I don't know why that didn't work, try this one, there we go, give my video a thumbs up. Uh, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, I am honest. Uh, this is my journey. Um, and basically, you know, I'm not claiming to be a, a trading guru because I'm certainly not. I am learning. This is my learning experience. Hopefully, I can learn fast enough not to blow this FTMO account. Um, but it is. It's a journey. This is my journey. Um, and come along for the ride. I'm not a trading guru. I'm not a financial advisor. Please do not listen to anything I say unless you've got already some knowledge of what you're doing. Um, you know, it is your own risk. Trade, every time you put buy or sell, you've got to be aware that you're prepared to incur losses. There is a risk. And I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research. Look at my strategy. Approve upon my strategy. If you do, get back to me and leave me a comment and let me know that you have. And that would be absolutely fantastic. So, with that being said, um, I'm going to quickly uh, switch screens and I'm going to put you on uh, my screen with my... There we go. That's it, yeah. So, this is 
fact, before I do that, I'll, I'll quickly show you uh, the, the day that I'm talking about. So, it was a fantastic day with a major tragedy uh, in it as well, as far as trading is concerned. Not real life, of course. Um, so, you see, coming back here, starting on the... Starting here, this was uh, on the 21st, okay? So... I implemented a new trading strategy, and at my point, at this point, I had something like um, I was at minus. Remember, it's a fifty k challenge account. I was at like um, my balance was at forty six k. So I only had one k left to play with, roughly, uh, uh, roughly two percent. Um, so. And I implemented my, my well, I was this strategy, you don't have to scalp. I was scalping it on a one minute time frame. It'll work on any time frame. So if you want to take larger and probably less dramatic and, and more consistent um, profitability and gains, you'd use a higher time frame. I was scalping it for those quick, short gains to try and boost my account up. And boost it up, I did. Um, I don't know if you can see this here. Uh, so this was on the 21st, first trade, three, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll round it up, so in dollars, uh, $336, 185 138 that was basically, one would have went against me, I was just, I got out of break even, um, $408 to $8, 454 that hit, allow that to hit my stop loss, because I still felt, it was good. And I, unfortunately I was just in slightly too early, and it did actually go in my favour after I hit my stop loss, how many times have we all heard that story, um, but very next trade, 453, so I covered the loss literally Im immediately. I mean, I don't know if you can see the times here. My loss was at 15.45, uh, and that was $454 loss, and I, I immediately gleaned back 1% at 15.53. So literally, eight minutes later, um, I had all my trade. Right after that, it's 16.06. Uh, this one, I, I closed out at 1%. Um, I normally was 1 to 1.5. One I closed at 1% because I saw the price stalling. Uh, it, did, it did actually stall, re, actually trace back to about half a percent, just less than half a percent in profit before it actually went down and it would have hit my original stop loss. But there's another, the couple of exit strategies you can use. I, I, I saw one of the exit strategies play out, so I took my 1%. Uh, if that exit strategy hadn't been there, I would have allowed it to hit the 1.5% one one or go back and hit the stop loss, but one of my exit strategies was in play, so I basically got out and took my 1%, which covered my loss. Immediately after that, you know, look at that, 1606, there's 1.5%, $666. That was our break-even, because uh, uh, there is a break-even strategy in this. Um, my break-even's typically slightly in profit, because rather than moving to break-even, uh, just say there was just say there was eight dollar commission on the trade well i'll move it at, uh, maybe one pip or two pips so it'll cover that eight dollars so your account doesn't actually go down you break even and slightly in profit but close enough to break even where if the strategy can play out and turn around and go back in your direction uh, for your one or one and a half percent you still get that but if it's going to come up to break even i'd rather break even with a slight positive than break even, even if it's a zero, but then minus your commission, your account still goes down. So that still class as a win. So, you know, I think as far as your stats are concerned, although that for me technically that's a break even there. Um, this one, uh, $200, that was basically a half percent gain. I'm going to cover this monstrosity. This this was the, the tragedy I was talking about. I'll get back to that in a second. After that, of course, what happened is because I had this massive massive uncontrollable loss and I'll get to a moment why that is I then of course if you look at my lot sizes before that uh, including that 8, 8, 8, 8, 14, 12, 8, 4, 10 to get a wee bit smaller here because my, again my, my account was lower so I had to start with a lower lot size but as my account was growing I felt co more confident in the strategy uh, and of course I had wins behind me, I had gains in that day, so I could use those gains to increase my lot sizes further. You know, look at this, four, 14 uh, lot size for 452 uh, gain, uh, then I, I kind of stabilised my trading strategy, uh, so these were all 8s, including the big loss, which ripped, I mean at this point, I was 2000 uh, basically $2,000 up on the day. Um, so that would take me from minus 46 to minus 48, so I was now only 2,000 down on my FTMO account, um, so, you know, I basically gained back f uh, 4% uh, on my account, which was fantastic, and then this, 
and I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, so again, you see the lot sizes are much smaller now. They had to be because I'd lost all my gains. I was back down to only having a, you know, a couple of percent, if you like, uh, not even like one and a half percent. My account was down to. So uh, again, but there's a win, small loss, win, win, small win, uh, win, small loss. I was basically break even. I wasn't quick enough to move my uh, stop loss. Uh, small win, and that was a genuine one percent. Um, hit my stop loss straight trade but again if we have a look at um, you know let's have a look at the including the loss because that was going against me but then something horrible happened but that that should have stopped out at 1% so that would have been like $460 um, but we actually have a look at this in 21st year um, not that bottom one that this doesn't count that was on the 19th we're looking from here the 21st so these are our trades in fact if i just look at the 20 i'll not even take the ones i took on the 22nd um these these are the ones i took on the 21st uh so to here uh, and if we actually have a look at this that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen trades um and really only two that would have hit stop loss that's it two that would have hit stop loss at one percent uh, a couple of small break evens technically you could not count them but if we look at green against red uh, and that's again a break even uh, so even if i take out my break even so winning trades one two three four five six seven eight nine ten winning trades and two losing trades, 80% win rate. Um, so, absolutely brilliant. Um, oh, that was, that's 12. 12, one, 10 out of 12. So, is that right? One, two, three, take away my break evens. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Yeah, 10 winners, two losers. So, uh, I've won out 12 trades, I won 10. Um, Again, round about the 80% mark. I'm not going to do the, the maths on it. So, a good winning strategy. Now, this strategy, I was scalping on the one minute. It work on any time frame, and I'm about to show you that. Let me get back to this tragedy, this monstrosity. Now, I'm very aggrieved by this. Um, it should have just, it would have just been a 1%. It would have been a loss. I'm going to be straight up and honest. It was, it was going against me anyway. Um... Uh, I can't say if it would have maybe turned around, but it, when this happened at that point, it was kind of, I was about half a percent down. I wasn't too worried because I still felt it was going to turn around. And it may have done. It may have done. I don't know. Where, you know, at the point when it went horrible, it was in a small loss, but only a small loss. My stop loss was in place. My stop loss was set at 1%. So how on earth can this happen? Now, anyone that knows FTMO, understand that FTMO have the economic calendar the economic calendar says you cannot trade restricted news events for whatever asset you happen to be looking at uh, you see this asset i was trading on this day was cad jpy okay so uh, i was doing cad jpy and gpp uh, jpy uh, so but this was a cad jpy which has been nice wins, nice wins, nice wins. Same strategy, okay, that was a legitimate loss. Nice win, that was uh, pound JPY, but CAD JPY, win, win, uh, pound JPY. So, you know, I was basically doing, it was a JPY. JPY was on a serious downtrend. It was a very, very weak currency that day. The pound was very strong and the CAN was very strong. So it seemed logical to to put a strong pair against a weak pair and trade the trend. Um, obviously, the trend's your friend until the bend at the end. So, this turned out to be the bend at the end. But why Why is it not just at $400? Because, or $460, whatever it was, 1%. My stop loss was in place. There was a news event, a restricted news event. That news event obviously went in the favour of JPY. JPY suddenly surged, it spiked right through my stop loss and by the time the server closed my trade it had lost nearly five percent crazy now great lesson learned great lesson learned i often say to myself why is ftmo so um hell bent on you not trading certain news events people have moaned about this with ftmo 
for as long as I've seen videos on FTMO. You know, oh, I got, I got, um, my my account got uh, terminated because I traded within a, a restricted news event, um, etc., etc. Uh, or it's really annoying that you can't trade when there's restricted news events because uh, I have to check the economic calendar, blah, blah, blah. So people have wondered about for as long as I can remember, but actually you can see why FTMO, great lesson learned, great, great, great lesson learned. I just wish I'd learned it when I was already 10% up or 15% up or whatever, rather than I was, you know, I was still at that point 5% down but I had gained 4%, I was 9% down, gained, you know, 4%, a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work had gone in to gain, you know, there was 10, at that point, 10 trades or whatever it was, um, you know, one loss, the rest were all winners, I had, I had laser, I had my laser goggles on, I was super focused, I was trading my strategy, I was in and out of trade, in and out of trades, in and out of trades, gaining my profit, gaining my profit, minimising my losses. So the strategy I'm pleased about, the strategy seems to work really, really well. Um, but lesson learned, there was a restricted news event about JPY. Um, and this news event caused a... Obviously, it was in favour of JPY and caused a massive spike. I say a massive spike. It's a massive spike on a one-minute time frame. If I had been trading this on the one hour, I would have been fine. Uh, if I'd been trading it on the one hour, your stop loss is going to be so much higher. My stop loss was like six pips. So I'm talking about a mass. You know, when you're trading a one-minute time frame, you know, this moved to something like 15 pips in the space of one minute. So, of course, if you've only got a six or seven or eight pip stop loss, uh, it gets blown out of the water. And it went through at such speed. I mean, incredible pace. It went through my stop loss. By the time the server caught up and closed my account with the slippage, um, it was that trade was 5% down. So it was 4% more loss on it than it should have been. So are FTMO right? You know, especially if you're scalping, should you be trading these restricted news events? Absolutely not. If you were trading a one hour or four hour time frame, it probably wouldn't have mattered. Because the spike, eventually by the time it settled, it was something like 15 pips or something, uh, or maybe even 20 pips. But if you most people are operating on a one or four hour time frame, uh, they've maybe got a, a 30, 40, 50 pip stop loss. Um, so you know, their trades are lasting much longer, but technically uh, they're at less risk because it'd have to move against them a lot to be spiked out. So, um, yeah, a bit annoyed. I, I actually got onto FTMO and basically said, look, I understand that there's restricted news events. Now, because it's a challenge account, you can trade around restricted news events. If this had been a live funded account, my account would have been done. That's it. I would have gone against what they say you can do with your account. My account would have been done. Even if I was still in profit, that's it. They, they would close that. Um, so, because um, you cannot retreat. And now, I didn't check the economic calendar. Admit it. Because when you're on a challenge account, you don't think about it. You think... Well, it doesn't affect me because I'm allowed to trade around restricted news events. It's only if I get funded that, that I can't. However, in saying that, I should be practicing the way I want to trade in the future. I should have checked the economic calendar. I should have seen that there was going to be a major news event, uh, restricted news event, on the uh, which would affect the pair that I was looking to trade and kept out of that trade. If I had just not done that one trade, just that one, and then did the rest after, you know, I could have been 5 or 6% up right now. Uh, or had a 5 or 6% gain, potentially take me back to break even or just above break even on my FTM account, which would have been fantastic rather than this blasting down and leaving me with one and a, well, basically, uh, you know, I was, I was actually, I think I was something like, um, I had less, I was like three quarters of a percent to blow my account, three quarters of a percent. So, plugged away, pulled it up a little, small break even, Small profit, small profit, small profit. Now that's on the twenty second. Here, small. So these little ones took me basically to, I think it was just under one percent remaining on my account. Couple of small wins, couple of small loses. So basically, I'm one. I'm still got about one percent at the moment. Um, I need to check that. But I think, uh, yeah, one. I'm one percent. See, this was this was the pull up. Look at that was a trade. There's a twenty first. Okay, now watch. Boom, 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 boom. Nice, nice, nice. That was the genuine loss. Up, up, up. Small win, small win then. Bang, one trade. Look at that. Boof, minus 
four eight three three. So I basically had just a little fraction over half a percent before my account was blown. Crazy, horrible, horrible day. Small wins, a couple of wee losses at the end, but still generally up from where I was. Uh, that was minus four four eight three. Currently minus four one nine eight. So uh, I've given myself. I've got about one and a half percent roughly to play with at the moment um, and I'm going to try and obviously recover this at least to break even um, 13 trading days and if I can get at least to above break even I can get another challenge account I can get a free uh, a free challenge uh, refresh um, so at the moment my target is to try and get above break even but again now I'm trading these tiny lot sizes um, so it's going to be a lot harder so that's my FTMO story so far as I said I did I did uh, question didn't complain as such, I asked FTMO. I says, look, I understand there's slippage. I understand that, you know, slippage does happen. But this was roughly five times the loss that my stop loss was set at. Five times the loss. It should have been around about $460. It was over $2,000, $2,139. So I says, you know, that, that seems a lot. You know, it's five times, five times my stop loss is what I lost. So that seems excessive slippage to me. However, uh, they say, you know, they didn't say shit happens. They said slippage happens. Effectively, in this case, the same thing. Um, so, and really, I, c I can't hold it against them. I, I, I still think that was too much. Their server was too slow. Um, and, and catching, you know, it should, I mean, it's, it's automated. The second it went above my stop loss, bang, it should have been out. By the time it went out, I was five times my stop loss. Um, so five times the loss here, but again, you know, if I'd been trading this on a one hour account or a, a one hour time frame or a four hour time frame, um, that wouldn't have happened because I wouldn't have been trading, you know, eight lots. Um, you know, if I've got a 30 or 40 or 50 pip stop loss, that would only have been one or two lots. So because I was scalping, that's the risk you take, you know, it, it can move quickly. Uh, the, you know, this, the slippage because of the spike by the time the server closed my order it happened to be that i was five times my stop loss uh which was horrible tragic but i've got to keep reminding myself it was on a one minute time frame if i had been trading and with so you know, i had like a six six pip stop loss if i had been trading this on a um one hour four hour time frame um it would have been nowhere near my stop loss i would have seen it going against me and thought mm, maybe i'll get out um so or even if i hadn't let it hit my stop loss it would have been that one percent so around about 460 dollars trading the higher time frame that's the problem with scalping so uh lesson learned on my on my part now unfortunately you know i'd love ftmo to go yeah that slippage was excessive what we'll do is we'll we'll uh effectively uh, amend it so uh you know your loss is your where you had set your stop loss one percent minus 460 uh that would be great that would give me a chance to get back into profit maybe within the next nine trading days even hit my my profit target now i feel that that's going to be very very hard to do but if i can get back to break even that's my target at the moment and then i can get a free challenge re-challenge and hopefully you know use this strategy to win that so that was my epic 21st uh of january trading day biblical uh in in the struggle you know i gained two thousand dollars just over it was two it was like two thousand and eighty dollars or something um obviously commissions off that so the actual profit was maybe like eighteen hundred nineteen hundred um and then that tragic biblical you know, just cataclysm, cataclysm, can't even say it, cataclysm, we'll go with that, of this trade that just, oh, just devastated. I mean, in fairness, I'm lucky it, it did stop when it did, because again, if it had been even another 1%, the chances are it have been done. That would have been it. As it is, with these small lots, scalping, really small lots, to start with, I'm risking quarter percent per trade now. Just quarter percent you know back here this was i was risking half a percent these were half percents once i had a few wins and felt confident with the strategy i put it to um half a percent so these were half half a percent felt really confident upped it to one percent risk so I was risking one percent for one to 1.5 so 1.5 percent win rate if, if i hit my um my tp2 um 
and that's why I was risking these larger lot sizes. So, um, yeah, what can I say? Lesson learned, uh, FTMO. Thank you very much. I'd love to if you'd help me a little because I do feel that five times your stop loss by the time uh, the, or the server closed my order was too excessive. However, but remember, I was taking a, trading a one minute time frame, so that spike, I mean, it was, it just went boof. And by the time they got me out, I was, you know, down 5% on that trade. Um, so, horrible, horrible event. Um, but lesson learned. So, now I have the economic calendar up. Uh, refresh it. It's the first thing I do now when I sit down at the computer. I pull up the economic calendar and I check to see if there's any restricted news events. Uh, if there's no restricted news events, what I then do is take out the low. To see when the next, uh, you know, even medium event might be that might affect me. If I don't see anything there, I go down to high, and I see that you know, uh, two are expired. They were, uh, they were earlier on. Uh, in fact, that one's expired. All three of them are expired. So there's no, there's absolutely no news events today that would affect my trading. Go back to medium. There's still one medium uh, at 15.45 uh, affecting USD. So although it's only a medium event, I'll probably keep out a USD if I was considering getting in at that time. Certainly nothing high. And if there's any restricted events, um, just be aware of it. Uh, and even set an alarm, you know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour even. Because even on a one minute trade, some of my one minute trades did last 16, 17, 18 minutes. So maybe half an hour before, set an alarm, say, you know, do not enter a trade on that pair now because of a restricted news event coming up. Uh, so it was a good lesson learned, uh, you know, and I understand why, if, and looking at that, especially if you're scalping, I understand why FTMO uh, have that restriction in place. These restricted news events, you cannot trade two minutes either side, open or close a trade. Uh, if you do, you'll blow your account, so don't do it. Um, and so that was, it was fantastic, fantastic lesson learned. So with that being said, uh, I've been prattling on now for 27 minutes just to explain what went on. I, I think, you know, just because it affected me so much. Um, and, I, you know, this is kind of therapeutic for me, to be honest. If I talk about it, I can, you know, I can get out of my head and move on. So, what is the strategy then? So, I'm going to switch screens. Uh, let's switch to... Where are we? We're, we're on screen two. Screen one, there we go. Uh, let me get rid of this right now. I'll make it full screen so it's easier to see. Right. There we are. We should all be good at that. So, uh, I've got two screens up just to show you the comparison. Okay. I'm only trading. I had only been trading the one minute scalping. But to show you this would work on any time frame. So, uh, here on the left, this is looking at, uh, let me see, where are we? Double check. That's the one hour. So the left is a one minute, the right is one hour. Okay, so this this is a trade um, that I took. This was one of my winning trades. I didn't take it on the one hour, I took it on the one minute. I just wanted to show you how it compares. So if you had taken it on the one minute against, if you had taken, sorry, one hour against if you had taken it on the one minute. But I want to show you the strategy itself works. So what are my indicators? First, I'm going to quickly run through my indicators, uh, explain to you, um, what they are, uh, their settings, and then I'll explain how I use them. So very quickly, first I've got Super Trend. This is in Trading View. Uh, this is a free. You don't have to download it or anything. It's already in Trading View. So I have. Uh, I was doing it with three Super Trends, but I felt that was that was a bit much. So I'm just doing it with two Super Trends now. Uh, it's less. It's less clutter on my chart as well. Okay. So let's have a look at the settings. Super Trend one, uh, ATR period is twelve, and ATR multiplier is three. Okay, that's your first one. This is going to be used as my trend baseline. My trend baseline. Okay, the next one um, is set to 10 for the ATR period, and the ATR multiplier uh, is 1. Okay, so that's that. That's and that's going to be my entry or my trigger. Uh, not really entry, there's another reason. And something else I'd wait for for entry, uh, but certainly a trigger if, if another condition is met, okay? So, ATR period 10, uh, ATR multiplier 1, so that's that, okay? And as you see, what that does, I'll scroll in a bit, and I'll take away that MA just now. You can see what that does is it puts a couple of trends, in fact, let me just, uh, I did this on the other chart, for some reason it's not happened here. Uh, make that 
nice and thick. Down trend, make that nice and thick. There you go. So, uh, the larger um, super trend I've bolded. Okay, so I've got a thick red or thick green. Thick green, I'm only looking to trade above uh, long positions. Uh, thick red, I'm only to trade below in short positions, so that's pretty straightforward. You've got your shorter period um, super trend. Again, just a thin line, red, we're looking to trade these sell triggers. Green, we're looking to trade long, red, short. So that's pretty straightforward. What have we got underneath that? I've got the Arun indicator. Now, the period, uh, I don't know. Let me just double check because I pulled up this chart. I don't know if it's done it separately. Okay, 21 period. Uh, let me double check my other chart. 21 period. Okay, that's fine. So they have the 21 period. So simply we're looking for crosses. When the red crosses above the green, we're looking for shorts. If the green crosses above the red, we're looking for longs. Okay. Or we should say, that's not exactly true. Even if I get a long signal here, but the red is still above the green here, I don't take it. Okay, I need the green to be above the red. Okay. Uh, see we here, uh, we look at the end of a short position. But if that green had already crossed above, I wouldn't take it. Because I need it to confirm. Okay, look for correlation. That's all. Just correlation. This correlates. Okay. Now the last thing is a stochastic. And by the way, uh, I showed you that. That's it at 21. I've got an RSI. Now the RSI. I've, I've moved the RSI down to a five period RSI. Okay, so it's a five period RSI, and I'm not using it like a normal RSI. This uh, the, the the core RSI is not for overbought and oversold. It's for I'm kind of using it for momentum as a momentum indicator here. What I've done is I've moved the upper and lower bands both to 50. That's it, both to 50. And I've changed the input to 5. Okay, so if price is above the 50, we're only looking for longs and it should correlate here and it should correlate here. Yeah, the price is below 50, we're only looking for shorts. Okay, and it should correlate here and it should correlate here. So this is all about correlation. Identifying the trend, look for a strong trend, and make sure we're in that trend. Now, the last thing, the really the trigger, if you like, it's a combination of two things. Ideally, seeing a sell appear on the on the shorter um, super trend. Uh, so it might have, you see this long super trend, it's already shorts appeared here, uh, or sell. Sells appeared here on the shorter, so the long and the short. But this, if you actually look, the short appeared, then the long. I like it the other way. I like the long to sell to appear, and then the short period. So here we have the long period showing the sell. If we ignore that sell, we could have absolutely got in there, but you know, how did we know we could get in there? We still had, at this point, the, the long super trend was still green. So I, I, I wouldn't have entered that trade anyway. What I'm looking for ideally is for, in this case, your long super trend to be red and, and obviously coming down with price. I'm looking for a retracement back towards that you see we've actually gone the short has gone to buy and then i'm waiting for the short to go back to sell at that point so that's for that's one of my triggers i'm for correlation only i'm looking to see that my red is above the green for a short which it is and what i'm waiting for is for my stochastic rsi which is just standard uh you know th uh, this is how trading view sets up 3 3 14 14 so i didn't affect that i didn't touch that at all i'm waiting for that to get and i'm using this as an overbought and oversold not the rsi the rsi is just to show momentum so i'm looking for this here to to get into overbought and ideally have already crossed to the downside uh, now whether it's still an overbought or whether it's come down it doesn't matter i want to see this starting to come back down so what do we see here it was it was already coming down RSI had already dropped below the 50. My red is still above the green. And then I got a sell. I took it. Bang. In. Straight in. Okay. So on the one hour, that would be you taking it there. You see what I mean about stop losses here. Where I set my stop loss is just above either. Either the last swing high. The last swing high. Or above the long super trend. I set this one just above a long super trend here, so that would have been pretty much 59 pips, um, and setting a 1 to 1.5, uh, and as you see, took out the 1.5. This, however, 
obviously trading the to get one and a half just say you were risking one percent so you've made one and a half percent here uh got in on where were we that candle there however that trade would have taken one day and one hour so 25 hours to take that trade so that's an overnighter okay great trade absolutely worked beautifully fantastic trade but that trade excuse me would have taken uh 25 hours to complete but you see a really solid trade absolutely no problem let's nip over let's nip back here to the one minute now okay so if we're having a look at the one minute and just say we came in about this period okay so looking at the one minute if i was to set my one to 1 1.5 again risk to reward okay so let's um i'm gonna have to pull that down on the big one so i can see what i'm doing there we go right so let's have a look at this and i'll pull this up a bit as well okay it's just there we are so i can manage it on the one minute so let's have a look where would i got in the one minute well actually would have been a wee bit earlier because if you have a look my um stochastic rsi crossed above further back so that's the first thing so red on the arun is above the uh, green so we're looking for shorts and we'll be looking for the cross down so where would i have entered that i think and let me just move this over uh if i'm being honest would have entered it there yeah after the drop of that candle so this candle would have surged down a bit and then i would have gotten because at that point i would cross below my rsi has dropped below 50 my red still above my green i've had the sell signal on the short super trend and i would have gotten here so that's there we go so we've gotten a wee bit earlier than i would have on the one hour where am i setting my stop loss so just above the last swing high or the long just above the long super trend so i'll set just above the long super trend just there now i'm going to make this a bit short again on the on the larger time frame just so i can manage it on the shorter one there we go ah wrong way i'm gonna undo that i'll try that again uh just want to be able to see what i'm doing Right, uh, let me pull that over a bit. Oh, look at the. Let's do this another way. Computer lagging a wee bit. There we go. Let me just tidy that up a wee bit there. Okay. Here we are. So, this is my trade. Now you see you could have actually got one to three risk award one to three point three what are we targeting though one to one and a half yep so my stop loss you see there would have been eight pips i'll zoom in again a wee bit i'm going to make that a bit shorter now yeah i can do that on the smaller time frame there we go that's more manageable uh this is why i don't like multiple charts open uh okay so um let's have a look at this again oh, that's what's happened I'm just going to I'm just going to do this here right so let's have a look at this when would you go in in fact I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to replay this so I'll come just just before that cross so imagine we're looking at this live um, so we're looking at this live we, we've got the long super trend the thick super trend coming down short we're looking for again we could have maybe gotten here that would have been a nice one uh, here probably not because the green was below so you're waiting it's come back and just got to oversold so you could have got in there uh, this one didn't make oversold, uh, sorry, overbought, I should say. So I wouldn't have got, I, I might have gotten in that one, I wouldn't have gotten in this one. But you see, it's, it's still hit, it's heading back up yet again. Because remember, if you're in a trend, it's going to just keep going. It's going to come down, retrace, come down, retrace, come down, retrace. On the one minute, five minute, 15 minute, one hour, four hour, it's the same thing. You just get more tr trade opportunities, obviously, in the smaller time frames, but there's more volatility, as we know. So, uh, let's have a look at this then. Um, we know this is a winner, so I, I'm not cherry-pricking because this was a trade I took, okay? I just want to show you an example. Um, so, let's skip forward. Now, we see that we've, we've got the uh, stochastic RSI has now come into the uh, overbought, I keep saying oversold, overbought so there's the first thing so we're already interested at this point on looking for a setup okay 
so that's it because unless that comes in uh, to overbought or oversold i'm not looking for a setup overbought i'm looking for obviously a short oversold i'm looking for a uh, long so i'm going to keep watching this uh it looks like i might be looking to cross the arun's looking like it's the red's coming down perhaps to cross the green so that would worry me if the green crosses above i'm not going to take the trade um so but i'm watching it keep watching it boom there's a sell signal now that that qualifies we're in at the close of that candle what everything that we've talked about is in place so we already had the long uh, or i'm going to call it the thick super trend coming down the thin super trends the long and short super trends the the long super trend was already coming down so it was short and i was looking for a retracement back towards it which we had with a short buy on the short super trend it's now changed to, to sell which means that has gone red on the short super trend the arun is red is still above the green the rsi has come down below 50 to show that short momentum and we've got a cross down here of the uh, stochastic rsi i would enter a short trade here so i would have been at the bottom of that candle short trade i would have set my stop loss just above the arun you can go above the swing high but if the swing high is on the outside of the arun i would i would go to the swing high if the swing high is on the ends or not the arun the super trend sorry the uh, if the um swing high is below the super trend i normally go just above it so i would i actually set that there we'll got right on it at eight pips so just i mean literally just above we're setting uh, a wee bit so I can see what I'm doing. We're setting one to one point five. Ish. I'm not going exactly on that. I'll do one to one point five two. So there we are. We're in, um, and then we watch it play out. So trading strategy is I'm staying in until uh, ideally we hit. I mean the perfect trade we're going to hit a one point five. Okay. What I do is when it gets down to one percent. I move my stop loss to break even um, so just to show you that I'm going to move this to 1% there we go and we're going to watch it see why I don't move it too early there we are so that's now I've, I've moved this down to break even so I cannot lose in fact when I say break even as you know I, I'm really just moving it to be honest you know 10 or 20 dollars into the profit so that's like one pip or one and a half pips into the profit so that if it does then swing back against me at least i'm not dropping my account um so when i say break even i normally have it say like one pip beyond break even so i'm in profit uh put that back to one and a half percent that's all i'm doing so my exit strategy and this would now be a safe trade because my stop loss would be done so it's a no risk trade we see we're almost there so Two things are going to exit me, okay? I'm either going to let it hit its stop loss, uh, sorry, it's take profit, uh, which is going to exit me, or if I see the stochastic RSI come into over sold and cross above. If I get that cross up, I'll come out. It might only be half a percent up, one percent up, but that's when I get out. That's why you saw in my stats that, you know, a couple of them were one percent range rather than one and a half. Because if this comes down and crosses up and it's not hit my take profit, the chances are it's turning around. Because when it's down, what happens? Price comes up. When it's down, what happens? Price comes up. So, typically, again, depends on the strength of the indicator. Oh, sorry, one other indicator I meant to mention earlier. Put that back on. This is the uh, the 200 uh, MA moving average, simple moving average. Again, we're looking for price to be below it. If price is below it, we're looking to enter trade. If price is above it, we're looking to enter long. Uh, below it, we're looking to enter shorts only. Uh, I, I'm less, um, I'm less worried about that, especially scalping, because even a small retracement on a one hour, um, you know, against against the direction of the moving average, can be you know five or six good trades on the one minute. So, uh, but again, that that's in there just again as a. a third or fourth place co uh, correlation if you like anyway let's see how this plays out boom there you are so there we've hit our one percent job done pull it back a wee bit more there we go uh one and a half percent i should say uh, and then instead of taking one and a uh sorry 25 hours on the one hour time frame we are in and out in 12 minutes uh and it was no risk uh you know to be honest it was no risk at 
11 minutes but sometimes there's no risk i can move it it's at one percent profit pretty quick i move to take uh break even or just a pip and on the correct side of break even um and sometimes that's within a minute or two so within a minute or two it's a no risk trade um and then you know you just watch to see what happens either you're going to hit your take profit um or you're going to get a cross up of the stochastic rsi in which case you'll close your trade so let's have a look at that Oh, wrong one we can't have a look at that i'm not going to go through all that again so basically that's how it works so um yeah that's it that's my trading strategy uh in a nutshell this video's run on 45 minutes i'm going to close it very quickly if you've stuck this out well done and thank you very much i hope you've enjoyed this video uh if you have again do me a solid uh oh, it's the same one again let's go down i need to fix that uh, let's try that one. Yeah, there we go. Get, do me a solid. Give me a thumbs up. Like the video. It really does help me and maybe other people find me using the YouTube algorithm. Um, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. So thank you very, very much for joining me. I'm not a guru. As I said, do your own back testing with this strategy. You can. I mucked about with the... Um, Within the indicators, the settings to, you know, I did a lot of back testing from the default ones that the trading view uh, put on. And I did a lot, a lot of back testing to get this system that seems to work very well. I will mention one other thing. The first thing I do, obviously, is I check my, my economic calendar. Um, that's the first thing I do. I'm going to switch screens again. I, uh, I check my economic calendar, very, very first thing. Sit down, check my economic calendar. Job done, okay? Um, and I look for if there's any anything that might be a problem, uh, I'm, I'm just not getting involved with it. Um, any restricted, uh, anything that's restricted, I am out. I'm not going to open a trade within that asset a good half hour before. I don't want to risk it, okay? So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing then um, is I, let me pull this up. Um, first thing I check the economic calendar. The second thing I do is I pull up uh, livecharts.co.uk forward slash currency dash strength dot php. I'll put a link to the description uh, in the bottom of this video. Um, and what I'm looking for, uh, obviously come in, refresh the page. And I'm obviously, I'm wanting a trending pair. Simple. So what's going to be the strongest trending pair? Something that's really strong against something that's really weak easy so for example have a look at this usd really really weak chef really really strong so usd shift pair great um on that particular day a uh, uh, pound and uh what were we pound and cad uh against uh, it was against the uh, japanese yen um so you know literally had one bar on one and full bars on the other so if we have a look at this for example usd against shift so uh, I'm assuming that's a pair that I can trade. You are on the correct screen. Let me pull up my market. There we go. Uh, is that a pair I've got up? Let's have a look. USD shift. There we go. So there's USD shift, and we're having a look at USD shift. So this is live. Uh, the currency right at the moment. USD is weak. Shift is strong. So if you're looking at UC, you would expect um, USD to be going down against the shift because USD is weak. And that's the first one in the name, the pair USD shift. So USD would be going down against shift going up. So we'd be looking for a descending uh, market. I'll have a look here. What do we have? Great, fantastic, a descending market. Now let's have a look at this strategy. Now, oh, this is a great example. Again, this video is running on, but it's very important. At least I hope you've, you're finding it informative. The Arun, you know, at first I think perhaps the Arun indicator is really not important and I really don't need it. So, for example, you know, here's we've got a sell. But look at that sell. Everything else was good. You know, the, the RSI was coming down below 50. The stochastic RSI had, had reached the over bought and was crossing down. So that was great. Um, we had a sell signal on the short, which was fantastic. Uh, in fact, did we? Uh, that's the long. That's the short, yeah. So we had, but the Arun was green above red. So would you enter that trade if you're sticking to a trading This is what we're talking about. to a trading strategy, not using emotions. Um, you know, you're saying, oh, well, price is below the 50. We're below the thick, uh, you know, we're below the thick um, or the long, if you'd rather, uh, super trend. Uh, and we've got a sell in here. But look at their rune. It's green above red. And what happened to price? Nothing. 
it ran sideways. Another sell signal. So even if that was oversold, even if that's below the 50, we're still green. And you would have just got yourself caught in a, a, a ranging market here. Yeah, eventually it dropped down. You may have got your 1.5%, but that could have ran sideways forever or gone. That could be the bottom of a particular range and price could have come start coming back up. So that would have kept you out of that sell. Would have kept you out of that sell. Would have kept you out of this sell. Um, next overbought uh, is, is here. There we've got a sell on the long and on the short. Um, so if I have a look at that now, Great example, have a look at that. So we can see that the we've got the sell on the short, the long was already showing sell on the super trend. That ruin, the red is now crossed above the green. The RSI is still below the 50. The stochastic is still coming down after a cross that was above the, okay, it's a little bit late, but we're still, we're not, I wouldn't have entered this uh, trade, or you wouldn't enter this trade if the stochastic RSI was already down into over uh, sold. But it isn't at that point, it's still in. Okay, we're, we're only about halfway down. So that would actually be a nice short trade, uh, just based on what we were doing. So where would we go in? We would have got in at the close of this candle. So we would have got in here. We would have got in there. We would have set one just above the Arun, which you see here. One to one and a half. Would we hit it? Oof, close. Let's see what I'm doing. Oh, as near as damn it. Uh, you know, looking at that, I mean, it's 1, one to 1 1.47. Even if I'd set the above the last here, so it's only 1 to 1 1.37. Um, but would you got out there? Yeah, because it got down into oversold. It started to cross up here. Started to cross up here. So you would have even got out at this candle there. Uh, again, based on the exit strategy. You would have got out on... That candle. Yep. So one, you would have made one percent on that. So although wouldn't have hit the, wouldn't have hit my take profit automatic, my 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 automatic. Obviously, you can set your stop loss and take profit uh, in your MetaTrader. Um, but we were down into the oversold and we had a cross up. So as I said, that's another reason to trigger no emotions. <coughs> Excuse me. So trigger to get out, you would have got out. And you wouldn't have got involved in all this flack over here. You wouldn't have got involved in... Yeah, you could have got in and, and you know, eventually you would have, you would have made profit on it. But uh, that could have been the bottom of a range if you're looking at a higher time frame. And, and, you know, you could have... Suddenly the price could have gone against you. So, again, waiting for the confirmations. So, again, this... <laughs> look at this trade. This trade was live and you've made one... If you were risking 1%, you've now grown your account by 1.5% in six minutes. So, does the strategy work? Yes. Are there risks to the strategy? Absolutely. Can you set the strategy up and then walk away? Yeah, if you set your stop loss and take profit. However, um, you know, if I if I wasn't watching this and then came back, you know, price would be here at the moment and I'm only 0.44% up. So, at this point, by watching it, I would have got out with 1%. Um, if you're just not, if you don't give a shit, if it hits stop loss, Okay, great, you lose 1%. If it hits take profit, you hit 1.5%. You can set this up, set your stop loss and take profit and walk away. Absolutely. But if you're managing it, what might have been a losing trade, you can still win. So, you know, potentially this is going to come all the way up and we're going to hit a stop loss. If that was to happen, you're going to lose 1%. By, by watching it and managing it on this lower time frame, I had an exit signal, uh, which was the, uh, the stochastic RSI back down and oversold and crossed up. As soon as it crossed up, I would have closed. So I would have closed here and still made... 1% on the on that trade. So, you know, great. Who, who, who doesn't want to grow their account by 1%? Um, so there you are. I mean, we're potentially looking for another trade set up soon. You know, we've come back um, to the... Um, where are we? 23rd. This is live. Right, okay. Um, so, we're, we're potentially, this, this could be a trade coming up. We, we've already said uh, that uh, USD against shift, we're looking for shorts only. Um, we're having a, oh, this is just, um, I'll put this in the link as well. This is just how I'd very quickly uh, work out my lot sizing. So, for example, just to show you this, on this particular trade, my stop loss was six pips, okay, for one to one and a half risk to reward. Six pips. Um, so, I'd come here, and you see I've been risking 0 0.25 after that absolute horrible um, um, slippage and spike in, uh, on that 
It's a restricted news event. So since then, I've only been risking 0.25. So you say what you want to risk. I want to risk 0.25%. So if it goes against me, uh, and it was six pips, wasn't it? Uh, where are we? Six pips. So I'll quickly draw that in, work out where I want my stop loss to be. I want my stop loss to be six pips. And then I'll pull that down to one to one and a half. And that's how I want my trade to look. That's how I want my trade to look if it plays out the way I want it to play out. So I quickly go stop loss six pips. Come come here. Make sure it's the correct pair. Um, so we're looking at USD shift. So quickly come down. Uh, USD shift. Risking, I only want to risk 0.25% if it goes against me. If it's six pips, hit six, calculate. Uh, it tells me to take a lot size of 1.75, 1.749. So I quickly switch to my uh, my MetaTrader. I pull up that pair, quickly put my, my lot size at 1.74 and hit sell. Bang, we're in. Okay. Once I'm in, I then quickly come back to here. Uh, oh, here. And quickly look at where I should then a meta trader put my stop loss. So there's your number here. So on this occasion, my stop loss would be at uh, 0 0.91564. Take profit would be 91416. Uh, and put them into MetaTrader once my trade's open. Now, if it goes against you really, really quick, you just have to, on MetaTrader, hit X or whatever. But uh, you can only do so much. I've only got two hands. Uh, and that's it. That's how I do the trade and manage my risk as well. So I know if it goes against me, if price was to come right up, I'd lose 0.25% of my account. If it goes against me, uh, I'm risking 0.25 to win, well, one and a half that. So, um, Christ, what would that be? 0.375 or whatever. Um... So you can see here, I'm risking $113 to win one and a half times that potentially. As you saw, if you're managing this trade properly, uh, you would have seen the cross above on the stochastic RSI. You would have got out at 1%, so you would have made $113 on that. If you were just risking 1%, you know, you've got a decent account to play with, 1%, you set your stop loss at 6.995, so say seven, seven lots, uh, and you would make 1.5% on, on that. Uh, so that's, you're risking 455 for something like, what would that be, uh, $650, something like that, $649 uh, profit. Um, and that, so again, I'll include the link to this uh, in the description below the video. So I'll put the link to, the, it's a very quick and easy Forex calculator to use for your position sizing. I'll include this as well. I'll look at this. It's the second thing I do now after checking my economic calendar. Lesson learned. Um, I'm looking for uh, pairs that are really weak to trade against pairs that are really long. Easy as that. That's all you're doing. So you saw there, USD Chef. I would have come and looked at that. thought, okay, that looks good. Let's have a look at USD Chef. Come here. Chosen USD Chef. Had a look and went, there you are. And everything else, everything was perfect. We were below the 200. We were below the thick... Uh, sell the short sell came in. Um, we had the Arun cross red, we had just had a cross above, um, and our RSI was below 50, so everything there would have been a good trigger. So I could have literally come in, go, oh, we're set up, set, boom, six minutes later, uh, not even that was on this one, four minutes later, uh, you've just made one and a half percent of your account if you're risking one. Uh, anyway, that's it. That's my trading strategy. We've now gone on nearly an hour, so I'll leave that. I'll leave that there. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, so again, I hope you've liked this. Um, it's a small channel, just looking to grow. So if you can, if this, if you felt you've had any value from this um, video at all, if you could give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I'm just trying to grow this small account, help everyone else out as much as I'm trying to help myself out and learning on how to beat these markets. And become an FT more funded trader. My journey now obviously is a lot more difficult because I've got, you know, I've, I've barely got one and a half percent risk at the moment that I can risk. So I'm having to take these small, I'm only risking quarter percent per trade. So doing that, it's going to, you know, it's going to take me, if I'm risking quarter percent a trade, it's going to take me something like, um, what's that going to be? Three trades, four, three, one and one and a half. It's going to take me three trades to gain one percent. Is that right? One to one and a half, so three, seven, five. So roughly three trades to gain 1% on my account if I'm only risking quarter of a percent. So again, if I have, say, nine good winning trades and no losses, uh, I could grow my account by 3%. So I'm going to have to go really slow because, I, I remember, if I'm risking 1% and it goes against me, I've now only got half a, half a percent to play with. So I can't risk 1% again. So I, I've got to keep my lot sizes really small, grow like I did on the 21st, grow up, 
hopefully not have any major catastrophes like I had. Um, I've still got a chance at least to get back to above break even on the count and, and hopefully get a free FTMO retrial. Am I learning a lot? Yes. And that has been good. Uh, and actually, you know, was I being lazy and not checking the economic calendar? You could say yes to that. You could, you know, again, I, my mindset was wrong. My mindset was, well, it is only uh, a challenge. You don't have to worry. You're allowed to trade around restricted news events in a challenge. So don't worry about it. So I didn't even check. However, if you've got... If you're trading, you know, on a one minute time frame and your tiny stop loss, uh, that news event can absolutely blow your stop loss out of the water and literally did it. And honestly, God, it moved so fast. It was under 10 seconds. That, that went from being just, I was like half a percent down at that point. So a couple of hundred dollars to $2,000 loss in the space of 10 seconds before the, the server closed my trade. And that slippage caused me five times the loss that I should have had. So yes, if you're interested in FTMO, even if you're doing a challenge or the demo, and you don't, you can trade around these restricted news events. Don't get into the habit of making that priority one. Check it. Check your day out on the economic calendar. Make sure that you're not going to get yourself into trouble like I did. Then have a look at your trades. See what you want to trade. You know, I look at the strength indicators I showed you to see what what pairs I might want to look at initially. What's strong and what's weak. Uh, you know, a strong against a weak pair. I'm going to uh, uh, asset. I'm going to look at that pair instantly, and then look for these setups. It's as simple as that. And I've shown you the strategy now. So yeah, it's an hour-long video. I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, as I said, not a financial guru. Uh, this is my journey to learn how to become a profitable, and hopefully one day funded FTMO trader. I will make mistakes. Hands up, as you just saw. But I like this strategy, and remember, this strategy will work on any time frame. Just if you do it in a one hour, maybe that one and a half percent will take you a day to get rather than six minutes to get. Uh, but you're at much higher risk of volatility the smaller time frames. You're trading a one minute time frame, you have to be sitting with your finger on that trigger. If you're tra a one minute time frame, if you're trading a one hour time frame or a four hour time frame, same strategy, you can set up and walk away. So, again, depend, next week I'm back to work. I can go back to work from the 26th. So uh, I'm going to have way less time to actually sit and scalp. Scalping is great because you can grow your account really quickly. You saw I had, you know, 12 winning, uh, 10 winning trades out of 12 um, in, this, you know, in the space of, you know, six or seven hours. And it grew my account by 4% until I had that horrible tra tragedy uh, due to the, the restricted news event. Uh, which just took all my hard work and blew it and slightly more out of the water. Um, so, yeah, scalping's great because if you can sit scalping, you could grow your account by 1, 2, 5% if you've got a good strategy uh, in a day, which is fantastic. Imagine you could make even if you made 3% a day, 10 trading days, uh, you know, there's 30%, 20 trading days, uh, there's, you know, it's amazing what you can make. You can 60% growth in, in, in a month potentially scalping if you can have that 80% win rate using this strategy, one to one and a half or thereabouts. Um, but you have to set your computer and, and, and monitor it. If you're at work like I'm going to be next week, what could I do? Look at the one hour time frame, say, uh, have a look in the morning, economic calendar, look at my strength in, uh, indicator to, uh, to see what pair is weak and what pair is strong get onto that pair you know, and just keep check it periodically during the day and then get into a long trade or a short trade but with a much higher stop loss and take profit so once i'm in the trade and it's set up and meta trade i've got my stop loss in place take profit i can forget about it and one or one of the others going to happen again yeah you could say it'd be nice to manage it you see your uh, stochastic rsi uh, going overbought or oversold and you're still in the trade and you get a cross up or down and you want to close the trade Maybe not take the full one and a half, take the one like, oh, take the one like I did. Uh, that's fine as well, but, you know, you have to be there at that time to manage it. If I'm at work and I'm not going to be able to do that. So, still think it's a great strategy. Even if I hadn't managed some of these trades, I may have been, you know, maybe 60, 70% win rate uh, if I hadn't done it uh, manually. Scalping lets you do it manually and get into a lot of trades really quickly. Um, but back test it in longer time frames because I, I, I would, I back tested this. Uh, exclusively on the one minute uh, I've had a short look at backtesting on the one hour they'll need to do more but you've got all the settings you've got the indicators I've told you how you set them all how I've set them all up play with it play with play with some of the you know the the period settings within the indicators and see that something works better for you what works really well the settings that work well on a one minute time frame might need to be adjusted or tweaked to, to work slightly better on the one hour time frame or the four hour time frame so bear that in mind 
do your own back testing. I've given you everything that I know about this strategy uh, that I've come up with, uh, how it works, the indicators I'm using. It seems good. It seems good. I'm going to keep using it, hopefully grow my account at least back to break even on FTMO, slightly above break even so I can get a free FTMO re-challenge. Hopefully, uh, I've got something like, uh, what would that be? There's 22 trading days in a month. So I've got something like nine trading days to try and pull back, well, about eight and a half percent at the moment. It can be done. I've got four percent one day, two or three days like that. Hopefully I can get myself back at least to break even. So that being said, leave that there. Uh, I've said that so many times, we're going to go now, actually. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves. Um, you know, leave comments. Let me know what you think of the strategy. Anyway, you can see of, of improving it. I'm looking to learn as well. Uh, I'm going to leave the video here now. Um, yeah, good luck with your trading. Uh, this is Scotland FX. My name's Stuart. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care of yourselves.